We are seven weeks to our average last frost date. And today I'm going to do a little mini seed haul from the seed swap I just attended. Some of the seeds I swapped for and the other ones I actually bought. And we'll also be starting some of those seeds because of course I got some more tomato seeds. So I actually ended up taking my daughter with me to the seed swap. And in the morning, she helped me get together some of the seeds that I was taking to swap. I have a whole bunch of lettuce seeds that I saved. They're from 2002, but I went ahead and started some this spring and they have great germination rates. So I thought, let's go ahead and share these so people can grow some lettuce in their gardens. And I also wanted to take some of the cayenne pepper seeds I saved because again, I had really good germination on them. I had a lot of them and it's another great thing to grow in the garden. It was a really fun time. Lots of different seeds were there to swap as you'll see. They also had activities for kids. So it was really neat. My daughter made a little bird's nest out of willows. She was able to bend them and sort of weave them, which was really fun. They also had some lectures. There was one about seed saving I really wanted to attend. I didn't quite make it, but that's okay. There's always next year, but it's just really nice to have those opportunities to learn as well. First off, let's go through the seeds I'm not starting that I found at the swap. A lot of times they're just full packets of seed, just whole stacks of them just from stores that were clearing them out or whatnot. So I grabbed these bush beans, a pencil pod black wax bush beans. So it's always nice to try the different varieties. And then also got this pack. It's a con more fava bean. So I'm going to try fava beans this year, never growing them. I was talking to somebody actually at the seed swap. They recommended it just, you know, it's going to be a good quality bean grows good in our climate. And it's also something that's good to store for eating over the winter. So if any of you have grown fava beans and you have some tips, you can let me know. Okay, and then here is just some red romaine lettuce that someone had saved. And I don't have any red romaine. It's one of our favorites. And a lot of times at these seed swap, they'll just be like a big bag of seeds. And then they have little envelopes. So you can just go ahead, take a few of the seeds that you need because I don't need 20, 30 pumpkin seeds. So I got some pink banana squash seeds, a few of those ones to try, some mashed potato squash seeds. Heard those ones are pretty good. We'll try that as well as uh, some Cinderella pumpkin seeds. So we're going to try those ones this year. It's like a pumpkin that looks kind of like the Cinderella carriage with big ridges. It'll be interesting. And then again, another one, a whole bunch of full packs of these. This is a crimson sweet watermelon. I'm on my quest to grow some melons this year. This one says 71 to 80 days. These two are actually a really cool find. This is some alyssum, royal carpet alyssum. And then we also have this Dusty Miller silver lace. I don't know if you noticed, but these package, when I saw them, I'm like, whoa, those look retro. And they are. They have actually on the back, a date is 1990. So these were packaged 34 years ago, which is really cool. Being so old, I have no idea what the germination rate's gonna be, but I'm really excited to try them because again, seeds wanna grow. There was a really cool booth there and it was all about like trees and different trees for in our climate and area like Edmonton. And they had one of those, you know, it was a $2 little machine you could put in and get tree seeds. So my daughter, of course, how fine. So she wanted to get some and then I got some too. So we ended up getting a Russian almond as well as an apricot that is for our climate. They're saved from apricots that grow around in the city. So these are really exciting to try. Of course, tree seeds are gonna take a long time to grow. I'll probably start these later as a project when I have more time because I got a bunch of other things like things that need to be stratified and trees that take a long time to grow. Start that as another project, but nice to get those growing because it'll offer some color and we can start working on somewhat of a food forest. Now I got a few more seeds from the swap that I want to start right now. These first ones are a tomato. It's a blueberry cherry tomato. So you can see this person save their seeds on paper towel, which is an interesting method. So all I'm really going to have to do is just kind of rip this off and we're going to start these ones. Be interesting to see. Again, you know, you're never really sure if someone practices the right methods with saving their seeds. So you just kind of have to be aware of that. From my experience, most of the stuff has grown true, but you just definitely something to be aware of when you're just growing someone else's saved seeds where you're not quite sure exactly their practices. And then this little guy is a red robin tomato. Again, it's a shorter tomato, which I'm always looking for because you know me, I don't like tomatoes, which I'm actually going to start telling myself because it's true. I'm going to say I don't love tomatoes. I do like them. I just don't love them. <laughs> I do love growing tomatoes though. So I can say I love growing tomatoes. And these tomatoes aren't really behind because you can start them anywhere from six to eight weeks before your average last frost. Being at seven weeks, we still got lots of time because the other ones I started last week are just starting to sprout now. So another one I found at the swap is this Violet Queen Cauliflower. And we're going to start a few of these right away for the spring garden. A lot of times when you get these packs, there's not like a whole ton of seeds in them. Someone's started them and then they're just kind of sharing what's left in the package, which is awesome. I totally am for that. I think we should do more of that. I don't really need that many cauliflower. So there's quite a few in here. I'll be able to start a few. I'm going to start two in each cell and then I'll have some maybe I'll try to start in the fall. 
I've never had a whole ton of luck with cauliflower. To me, it's one of the more sensitive brassicas, but we're gonna always keep trying because that's how we learn. As long as I keep trying, eventually we'll get some cauliflower. So that's everything I got from the swap. Now I did buy from a few different companies. There was a company there for Acre Farm that I was looking at for a specific seed, which I got, but of course I got a few more. So I got this blue vervain. We're gonna start that pretty soon, I think. I gotta do a bit more research. As well, this is funny. I, I was trying to get ashwagandha, but I picked up a different package, didn't realize till I got home, which is fine. Everything happens for a reason, not meant to grow that. This is an Armenian basket flower. So we're gonna try and grow this this year. I did a little bit of a quick search and I think it said it was like a yellow bee balm, which yellow is my favorite color. That might work really well in my son's yellow orange garden. And then we got a few more that we're gonna start now. I got some milk thistle. I always find it kind of funny that we're wanting to plant, you know, thistles and stuff in our gardens but you know they have their time and their place and their values so the milk thistle is something that I definitely want to add to the garden we're going to have its own special spot for it and these seeds are pretty big I'm just going to put one per little cell here we'll see how it grows and then we'll have some more seeds again to try later milk thistle is excellent for your liver so it's just one of those additions that I'm putting in the garden for my medicinal garden. Then we have some Tulsi, which is also known as holy basil. I've grown this one before. It's a type of basil, but it just has more of those medicinal values. Something I'm going to use for the tea and such. The nice thing about a lot of these herbs and such is if you're intentional, you can easily save the seeds. They go to seed and produce hundreds of seeds. So you really only have to buy them once, as long as you go ahead and remember to save those seeds which I haven't always done very well in the past, but this year, again, we're gonna be focusing a lot on that. I can't really be too hard on myself because I do have a whole second container of saved seeds, and I have found myself over the years planting a lot more of my own saved seeds. I find it kind of takes gardening to that next level where when you see that little seedling pop up, it's like, oh, I planted your parents, and I saw your parent grow, and now you're the baby of that, and it's just generational. You get to see the generations of your garden grow. Okay, next we have something that can be controversial. This is some comfrey. Now there are different types of comfrey. There's a Russian comfrey that doesn't spread by seed. And a lot of people like that in the garden because comfrey will spread. Now I have five acres. I'm gonna have a whole big patch of this. This is the one that actually will spread from seeds. So you let it go to seed, it's gonna spread. I'm okay with that. I want a big comfrey patch. There are so many medicinal values to this, values in your garden, values for your animal. It's just one of those kind of like, I don't want to use that cliche term superfoods, but maybe like a super homesteader food. I'm not sure. We're going to go ahead and get some of this comfrey started. We'll just start a few this year and then we'll slowly over the years start to establish that comfrey patch. I think with a lot of these things, like people say how the mint is invasive and yes, it is in, in theory, but up here where it is cooler, I find even the things that are invasive, they can be controlled a little bit easier or like more manageable because I find like even the catnip that comes back every year, but it's not like it quadruples in size every year. It might double in year. I think for us up here, it's not necessarily like invasive. It's going to take over, but more like it's invasive. It's hard to get rid of. If you keep digging it up, it's going to keep coming back. And honestly, for me, I love that. I think that if plants want to live and there's value to them, we can harvest them for uses you can have a space in my garden. But again, I know not everybody has the five acres, so you're gonna wanna pick and choose what you do grow. But for me, I don't like to shy away from growing something just because someone said it's invasive. I'm gonna look at the reasons of why it's invasive and give it the appropriate conditions, like the horseradish. People are like, don't grow that, you'll never get rid of it. I don't wanna get rid of it. I want it to come back every year, so I'm happy with that. Okay, and then next I have this St. John's wort. We just one person that was selling some seeds. It was only 250 per pack. Or I think it was five for two. For 250, I'm like, yes, I want to grow that. It was on my list, so let's buy those seeds. So we're going to grow some St. John's work. Again, I love these because it wasn't at the swap. It was from somebody selling seeds, but they were a local garden. So these are saved locally, so they should grow pretty well for me because they're adapted to the climate. Now, these seeds are super, super tiny. I am just sprinkling them right on the surface, not even going to bury them because they do need light to germinate. So I'm just going to go ahead and then I'll spray them with my spray bottle. It'll get them wet set them into the surface and they should hopefully sprout for me. Three more seeds are gonna be starting today that I bought from a company at the CD Sunday and these are from Prairie Garden Seeds. Just recently been reading up and researching a bit about what's called long keeper tomatoes. So I was really excited when I found these and they had three different varieties of long keeper tomatoes. We have what's called a winter gold, which I believe is a yellow one. This Claire's, which is a red inner with a light pink yellow outer, as well as a ruby treasure, which is a red one. Basically, long keeper tomatoes are tomatoes that are supposed to keep long. So when 
normally you take any tomato when it's green, you can bring it inside and it's going to ripen over the next you know, week or two, usually it'll ripen. Well, long keeper tomatoes are actually meant to be picked green. They don't ripen on the vine and you pick them green and they're gonna ripen over the next few months. It's like you're picking a tomato off the vine in December or January, which is really exciting because it's just you know another way of preserving tomatoes. You know, we have the canning and you can freeze them and dehydrate them and all that. But this way is a really easy way. You're just gonna pick them green you know, you're going to have to store them appropriately. I'll have to do some research of how to store them properly. But the idea is to be able to pick those tomatoes off the vine all winter long. So I'm super excited to try these out and we'll see how they go. I don't know if any of you have ever grown the long keeper tomatoes. You can let me know how you like them. It's always nice just getting that first hand experience. You know, the, the seed catalogs will sell you, you know, customer service people will sell you, but it's the people that are growing them in their gardens that know the real deal. Still going to have to do my research on if they're indeterminate or determinate because then I'll know where I'm going to grow them. If they're going to grow really high or not so high. Because while I said I do love growing tomatoes, they can also be quite a bit of work. I mean, you're having to tie them up, prune them, take care of them. Unlike some other plants, you know, for me, mostly like carrots, those root vegetables, they're pretty easy. You plant them, they grow. Lettuce, pretty easy. You plant it, you grow tomatoes can be a little bit more work it's just one of those rewarding things okay and then i'll have these winter gold kind which i was actually reading and they're compact plants so maybe these ones will grow a little bit shorter and they ripen to yellow which is kind of neat to see I'm not sure if they're going to go red to yellow i don't think so i think they're just probably go right green to yellow and all these long keeper tomatoes came from prairie garden seeds which is out of saskatchewan so again those are pretty similar climate to us so it'll be nice because they're already somewhat acclimatized to our climate and they should grow really well so there we go seven weeks a few more odds and ends scraggler started still lots of time to get all those tomatoes started and all those six to eight week things started and next week at six weeks i'm going to be starting cucumbers sounds super early i know but i'll let you know all about why in that video thank you so much for watching we'll see you next time